This is breaking news on 8 News Now. Two big stories at noon, and we start with breaking news out of Henderson. The city's police chief is now on administrative leave. The I team is Vanessa Murphy confirmed the announcement was made earlier today, and she joins us now live in the studio with more on this. Vanessa, hello. John Henderson Police Chief Leticia Watson is on paid administrative leave. I asked a city spokesman why, and if anyone from the city would be doing interviews about this, she said no. Here's what we know so far. Watson was named police chief in September of 2017. She was a deputy chief in Arlington, Texas. She replaced former Henderson Police Chief Patrick Mowers, who was also removed from duty. He claimed he was forced to resign because of false accusations of sexual misconduct. Just last month, Nevada Attorney General Aaron Ford announced Chief Letitia Watson would be on the state's Sexual Harassment and Discrimination Task Force. Earlier, a City of Henderson spokeswoman released a statement that Deputy P Police Chief Thedrick Andrus has been named Acting Police Chief. Watson is on leave until further notice, and the city manager has the utmost confidence in the department's leadership and Henderson will continue to be one of America's safest cities. Now, we know in the short amount of time Letitia Watson has been chief, there have been several complaints at the department. It's been a rocky stay for her. The I team is working on this story, making calls. We'll have more for you tonight at 5 and 6. Back to you, John. All right, Vanessa, thank you very much. Also breaking up in Carson City, another member of the Nevada legislature has resigned. Northern Nevada Democratic Assemblyman Mike Sprinkle announced just a short time ago he is leaving office effective immediately. Politics Now co-host Patrick Walker is working his sources and is live in the newsroom. Patrick, what have you learned? Well, John, we have learned of Sprinkle's imminent departure within the last hour. The Reno Democrat formally announcing his resignation about 30 minutes ago. Sprinkle is a four-term assemblyman and career firefighter. Sources say a number of complaints have been lodged against him via a third-party reporting system that was implemented after an investigation into then-State Senator Mark Menendo by then-Senate Majority Leader Aaron Ford. In a statement, Sprinkle said in part, quote, in light of the growing sexual harassment claims against me, I will be resigning from my position as state assemblyman effective today. As for the claims against me, I am so sorry that anyone ever felt harassed or threatened by me. While that was never my intention, I am taking full responsibility for my actions and would never discredit the feelings or concerns of someone who felt wronged by me, end quote. Sprinkle's resignation comes just over a week after fellow Democrat and Senate Majority Leader Kelvin Atkinson resigned, in that case admitting, admitting rather, Using hundreds of thousands of dollars of campaign money. I understand that the uh, assembly floor session has just began, so uh, with that happening, his announcement on the floor should be happening anytime. Of course, we'll continue working this and we'll have more online as it develops and tonight on our evening editions of our newscast. For now, reporting live, Patrick Walker, 8 News Now. Great, thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Also, just into our newsroom, the Senate has just passed a resolution blocking President Donald Trump's emergency declaration on border security. It passed 59-41 with 12 Republicans voting on the resolution. Before the vote, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made one final appeal for support to block the House-backed resolution against the president's national emergency declaration. That declaration funds would fund the border wall. The president made the move to make the emergency declaration last month to free up billions of dollars to pay for the wall. President Trump has already said he will veto the bill. Congress would likely not be able to override the veto. Nationwide, Boeing's 737 MAX 8 and 9 planes are grounded for a second day. Fifty other countries around the world have stopped flights of those jets after two deadly crashes in just six months. This as investigators in France analyze black boxes from Sunday's crashed plane in Ethiopia. Hector Mejia live at McCarran Airport with the latest developments. Good afternoon, Hector. Good afternoon to you, John. The FAA is allowing airlines to ferry those planes to other airports, of course, with only the pilots traveling inside. And American Airlines has confirmed via email that one of their 24 total 737 MAX 8 planes is coming to McCarran from Miami. They did not have an estimated arrival time, though. American Airlines told us they are ferrying their MAX 8 planes to other locations around the country where there's space to park them. 
without affecting the rest of airport operations. This morning, I also reached out to United Airlines, which operates the 737 MAX 9s. They have no plans to ferry those planes, and they're staying where they are as of right now. Passengers we talked with this morning gave us their take on the order to ground these planes. I agree. Safety first. Because um, when you get on a plane, you want to be safe. And I agree fully. I think it was a good idea. I was a little nervous that there might be delays or cancellations on our flights, but there weren't any. According to McCarran Airport, 657 flights were scheduled for the month of March aboard the MAX 8 and MAX 9 models involving Southwest, WestJet, and United Airlines. For perspective, that represents about 2% of overall commercial operations at McCarran, and the FAA has given Boeing until the end of April to finalize improvements to their 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 planes. Reporting live, Hector Mejia, back to you. Thank you, Hector. A little bumpy out there for flying today. We've got blue skies with those breezy north winds. Uh, the air is gorgeous, all cleaned out thanks to those north winds, but chilly. Wow, the wind's not as strong as yesterday, but they sure are cool. Still 15, uh, sometimes 20 miles an hour. Temperatures just getting into the 50s. We started with 40s this morning, but wind chills down into the 30s. Now we're getting into those 50s, still feeling cooler than that. We've got all that cold air following the jet stream down into the southwest. We're going to aim for highs around 60. I'm not really sure we can make it, and that's running 10 degrees below normal. That big bomb cyclone across the middle of the country. We'll talk more about that in your complete weather now forecast. Uh, we're going to concentrate on trying to get this cold air warmed up as we head towards your weekend. We'll make a little progress today, not a whole lot. Some mid 50s at noon, and again, we'll aim for 60 degrees and we'll keep some of those north breezes averaging about 15 miles an hour. We'll take a look at a warm up heading towards your weekend in your complete weather now forecast, and that's just about 10 minutes. John? All right, Sherry, thank you. This afternoon, there is a frantic search in several states to find the two year old daughter of a murdered Las Vegas woman. And that is the suspect of a homicide we'll talk about in a second. But right now, there's an Amber Alert in place for two year old Nolani Robinson. That is 34 year old Darius Higgins. He was arrested yesterday in Milwaukee, accused of killing Nolani's mother. That woman there, 24 year old Sierra Robinson. Police say she traveled from Nevada to Wisconsin to pick up Nolani from Higgins. But police say Higgins killed Robinson, then took off with their daughter. Investigators are following leads that that girl may be in Minnesota or in Michigan. To politics, another new Democratic contender for the White House. This morning, former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke entered the presidential race. Last year, O'Rourke lost his bid to unseat Republican Senator Ted Cruz, but the race did vault him into the national spotlight. And O'Rourke is wasting no time on the campaign trail. He travels to Iowa today to begin a listening tour. Next on 8 News Now, baseball season is almost here, and so is Las Vegas' new ballpark. How about this? Just 26 days away from opening the Las Vegas ballpark. Look at this. They got the grass down. They're working on the infield. We'll come back and talk with the project manager next right here on Channel 8.